slight break from the calculations here. There's a bit of a, a written answer required for this one. So we have uh, a monochromatic point light source of wavelength lambda shining onto two narrow slits. The slits are separated by a distance d where that distance d is is of the same order of magnitude as the as the wavelength lambda. Uh, and it's shining on a, on a screen that is a considerable distance away uh, from the slits. So um, first thing to do is sketch the pattern of light intensity observed on the screen. Let's begin by drawing some axes here. So this is going across, left to right across our screen that we're shining on. And so we'll call that axis X. And we'll call this I for light intensity. Now, with our first light, which as you read down the question, you, you learn is a, is a red light. Uh, we have a maximum intensity here. And we will have a sinusoidal variation like this which is symmetrical about that middle centre point uh, we now need to think about why there are these maxima and minima so the maxima being these points here where the light has constructively interfered and the minima here where they've destructively interfered so the two uh, slits are producing two coherent beams of light so there is a constant phase difference between the two beams of light. Uh, but they arrive at any particular point along the screen. These two beams are going to arrive at slightly different times. If the two beams of light arrive in phase with each other at a point on the screen, that will produce a maxima, because they will constructively interfere with each other. And if the two beams of light arrive out of phase with each other, we'll get a minima. The two beams of light will destructively interfere with each other. We know from Young's double slit experiment that lambda, the wavelength, is equal to A, the separation of the slits, multiplied by X, the uh, separation of the fringes on our fringe pattern, divided by the distance between the source and the screen, or rather between the slits and the screen, uh, which is uh, big D here. Now, assuming uh, D and A are both constants, that tells us that the wavelength is going to be proportional to the separation of the fringes, which is interesting for us here because um, the final part of the question says if lambda corresponds to red light, what would the pattern look like for green light? So green light has a smaller wavelength than red light, has a higher frequency, a smaller wavelength, therefore the fringe separation must be smaller. So it's going to be a, a similar pattern, but with a, a lower frequency sine wave, if you like. Something like that would do the trick. Showing that the fringe separation of green light is smaller than the fringe separation of red light because the green light has a shorter wavelength.